Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Anushka Mukherjee. I am a second year student of BSc Forensic Science from lovely professional university, Punjab. My topic of research is distinguishing bug bite bruises from contusion marks. Have you ever thought a person coming to police for filing charges is actually abused or not? Let's see how sometimes they can deceive us. Introduction. A bruise occurs when the blood vessels tear, but the skin does not. The blood oozes out from the blood vessels and gets spread by the nearby area, forming a red spot on the skin. Medical term of bruise is contusion. Now, when some insects bite a person, it inserts its saliva inside our body and due to the allergic reaction, the spot appears to be reddish or sometimes purple red color. These are called bug bite bruises. Many a times, some insect bite marks do resemble with the contusion marks and it becomes a little bit difficult to distinguish between the two at a first glance. Next slide. Now the question arises, how bug bite bruises are formed? Let's take a look what happens when some insects bite us. As soon as the insect injects its saliva or venom inside our body, the lymphocytes consider this saliva or venom as foreign invader. Sooner, they will produce antibodies against it in order to kill them. In the process, inflammation occurs. Now, during these reactions, histamine molecules which are present in our body detects whether these are allergens to that individual or not. If so, histamine molecules will also react with them, forming an allergic reaction and causing bruise-like marks on that particular spot. Next slide. These are some examples of insects which can leave bruise-like marks after biting. These are black willow spiders, hornets, webs, some mosquitoes, ticks, and caterpillar. Now, there are variety species of caterpillar present in our environment, but it is seen that the nomia obliqua species of caterpillar leaves at most similar marks like contusion marks on skin. Next slide. Also, contusion marks are divided into many forms. First is subcutaneous contusion mark. This is the most common type of bruise mark which every person has experienced at least once in their lifetime. In this injury, the blood vessels get ruptured due to some blunt force and blood comes out under the skin forming bruise mark. The next is bone contusion mark. This happens when we suffer a strong blow on our body parts where the bone gets fractured and the particular area gets swollen and becomes red in color. Muscle contusion is usually seen in the ankle region of the leg. Generally, a person experiences a strain in the muscles or sometimes the ligaments gain torn, resulting in muscle contusion. Eye contusion is very painful as the eyelids become swollen and reddish in color. The small blood capillaries near the eye region gets torn and sometimes it may affect the vision. Next slide. Now, let's take a look how bug bite bruises resemble with contusion marks. The photo in the left hand side is of subcutaneous contusion mark, which is in the fourth stage of healing. As one can see, green edges are already formed. If we look at the photo on the right hand side, it is of a 22 year old Canadian girl who has returned from northeastern Peru but accidentally stepped on a caterpillar barefooted. The allergic reaction resulted in formation of the bruise like marks. At the first look, without the knowledge, one can mistakenly consider it as contusion marks. This confusion needs to be cleared by everyone who is investigating any injuries on body and giving reports. Next slide. But how? How to distinguish between the two? These are some steps that one can follow to distinguish between them. We all know that contusion marks changes its color with time. This is studied under bruise aging. At the moment of injury, it will look bright red. After some time, it will become dark red. After a day or two, it will appear as purple red. And then when it starts healing, green edges are formed first, then the yellow edges and finally disappears. But in case of bug bite bruises, no such color changes similar to contusion marks are seen. It gradually fades with time. We have to see whether any injury is changing its color or not to determine whether it's a contusion mark or an insect bite mark. Another process can be applied. A small test can be done named RAST, radioallergosorbent test. The collected blood will be sent for testing. 
if it's a confusion mark, the test will be normal. But if it's an insect bite mark, then a particular amount of antibodies can be seen, which are formed due to the allergic reaction of the insect saliva or venom. Next slide. It can have a severe effect on children also. Imagine a child coming home with a swollen red eye, like in the picture, the first thought that comes is whether someone has bitten or not. If the child could not properly tell you about what happened, it will increase your worries. You might think what actually did not happen. It is possible that the child was not bitten, but a waps like sting has uh, sting him near the eye, uh, which, uh, for which it is appearing like this. It can lead to misconception about the scenario and sometimes it can also be used to register false cases of physical abuse against someone. Next. The result of my research is to make people aware that insect bite marks, which look like contusion marks, can be misleading. But a detailed and thorough examination can clear the confusion between them. Small things like noticing color changes, magnifying the wound to see if any insect sting marks are present or not can help to give proper statement. After all, every insect bite marks differ from each other at some point of view. Next slide. As it says, prevention is better than cure. The conclusion and the purpose of my research is about preventing any misconception regarding any injuries on the body. Now, if someone comes to the police station for filing a report against physical abuse, the wound should be examined thoroughly to see if that person is telling the truth or not. Another question comes, why will someone register a false case? As we know, there are some people who are actually abused and tortured. For the benefit of them, law had given punishment against the abuser. But taking the advantage of the law, there are some people who threats of registering false cases for money and blackmail them. For the evidence, they might create false contusion marks to show that they are really tortured. To prevent this situation and to give justice to the real abused person, these steps need to be followed. Also, more detailed study is required on this topic for further differentiation. Thank you.